Welcome to Standing Firm Tribulation Radio, broadcasting the truth in the last days, giving commentary to the latest news, encouraging the faithful remnant through God's Word to help you stand firm. This is a worldwide ministry to all of God's children, of which many are currently undergoing intense persecution while others are facing an onslaught of demonic activity, extreme weather, and catastrophic disasters. You're listening to Tribulation Radio. We will be back in less than a minute after Paula Dispro introduces our show with heavenly music in a short music video. Remember to stay tuned for later in the show when Paula sings a different song each week to the glory of God. The name of our show today is Hoofbeats of the Apocalypse Are Growing Louder. We would need to be spiritually dead not to hear the hoofbeats of the apocalypse. It's growing louder every minute of every day in the hearts and minds of all God's precious children. It's not fear-mongering. It's not a product of vain imaginations. It's not just an opinion. It's not even necessarily prophetic. It is reality. It's happening now. Every believer should already sense the tremendous moral decline in our society. That's almost beyond belief. It's almost like waking up to a bad dream. We have seen the wrath of God being poured out on all ungodliness in this country and around the world for some time now. Although most will not see or recognize this wrath, it should not be so for God's elect children. We have been given eyes to see. The Bible clearly indicates what God's wrath is and how to recognize it. Three times in the Bible, specifically in the letter to the Romans, it says God gave them up by allowing them to sink deeper into their sins and its inevitable consequences. See Romans 1.18-32 Yes, my dear friends, sin does have its consequences. Listen and you can hear the approaching hoofbeats of the apocalypse. I believe that's exactly what we're seeing today in this country and around the world. When this country turned its back on God by approving homosexuality, the transgender, and every other sexual sin openly and unashamedly, then they have received the due consequences for their sins. When this country turned its back on God by approving of abortions, the killing of millions of innocent children, and the cruel treatment of the less fortunate, then they have surely received the due consequences for their sins. When this country turned its back on God, by removing his teachings and prayers from the public schoolhouse, then they have received the due consequences for their sins. When the whole world has turned its back on God by destroying his beautiful planet, then they have received the due consequences for their sins. So what are these consequences? The increased death and destruction upon the planet and in our communities have already shocked our sensibilities. We as a nation and the world at large are being overwhelmed by gangs, perverts, 
the insane, godless religions dragging humanity down to the gutters of immorality, mass murders in our schools upon our defenseless children, homelessness in our streets, and rampant drug addiction. Clearly, this is the consequences of our sins. I hate to even imagine how much worse it will get, but imagine we must. The streets will be filled with horror, with evil lurking around every corner. And for those of us who were born and raised in quieter times, we have seen the tremendous decline and its effect upon humanity. Back in the 50s, when prayer and Bible study was allowed in the public schools, with the Ten Commandments hanging proudly on the wall, we never heard of mass murders in our schools. Now the numbers are staggering. It is reported that there have been 2,057 school shootings since the Sandy Hook school shooting on December 14, 2012. Can anyone question the pain and suffering this has caused not only for the precious children, but the tragic loss of the parents and grandparents must endure? Before there was a sense of safety and confidence that our children were not being taught things contrary to our beliefs. Now our children are taken away and led into every manner of perversion through approved public school indoctrination. We had never even thought of allowing a five-year-old to choose their own gender. Now it's being widely accepted. This alone, not counting all the other perversions, will have a profound effect upon the family unit and the society as a whole. We need to count the cost. We are reaping the consequences for our sins. There are also dire consequences for destroying our beautiful planet. No, we're not going to blame global warming, but we will point to our sins and their consequences. Our cities are now being flooded beyond anything we have seen in history. Rising temperatures are raising the sea level, affecting our weather patterns, destroying crops, and causing the extinction of many different species that have a profound effect upon the ecosystem. Smog alone has been responsible for 5.5 million deaths per year. When we start adding up the number of deaths, disease, and poverty caused by violent hurricanes, tornadoes, forest fires, and earthquakes, we can plainly see the consequences of our sins. We can't blame God or anything else. The blame squarely sits upon our shoulders for the greed, avarice, selfishness, pride, and any other number of sins that would cause us to destroy our very home. Yes, we will sink ever deeper into the consequences of our sins. Again, it will be difficult to imagine, even by reading all the bowls of God's wrath in the book of Revelation. Let's be clear, the wrath of God is allowing us to slip deeper and deeper into the consequences of our sins. Dear friends, there is nothing we can do to stop it, nothing short of total and complete repentance. A stronger economy will not stop the decline. A more robust military will not stop it. The most magnificent wall on our southern border would not stop it. Climate control will not stop it. All the best political decisions from Congress will not stop it. Even our beloved president cannot stop it. Only one thing will stop it, total and complete repentance before a holy and righteous God. So what about the believer? What can or should the Christian do? We can keep preaching and teaching that people will wake up and repent. We can continue to pray. Yet there is one more thing we are called to do. This one last thing is not an option, for it is a clear command in Scripture. The Bible says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached up unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Revelation 18, 4 and 5. The good news is if every Christian living in the world today took this command seriously, we may not stop the descent, but we could slow it down substantially. If not for ourselves, 
than for our children and grandchildren. So how do we come out of the world? Well, we don't withdraw to some mountaintop with other like-minded believers. On the other hand, we do withdraw ourselves, our children, and our entire household from what the world is teaching, participating in, and selling. So how does the world teach and counsel us? They do it daily through all the social media platforms, YouTube, television, movies, games, public schools, organizations, surfing the internet, and counseling centers. Come out from among them and be separate. When you do, there will be a tremendous void that may cause you some slight anxiety or depression. This is where we really need other like-minded believers in Christ for mutual encouragement and love. You will need to really read and study all of God's Word, asking Him how to apply all of His teachings to your life. You will begin to enjoy the times of quiet meditation and prayer in the Spirit, experiencing an incredible inner joy and peace. As you put off the old life that was being shaped by the world and start putting on the new life shaped by the indwelling Spirit, you will not miss the world or the things in it. Fellowship among His true believers will take on a whole new meaning. Let me conclude by saying it again. This is a command of Scripture, because God loves you. He does not want you to experience the plagues falling upon the world as they sink deeper and deeper into the consequences of their sins. Come out from among them and be separate. Please join me in prayer. Good morning, Heavenly Father. Oh Lord, how wonderful it is seeing you so passionately leading your children at the height of the Great Tribulation, showing concern for their safety and well-being. How heartbreaking it is to see the whole world so corrupt and diabolically sinful that their sins have reached up to heaven. As your wrath is about to be poured out on a wicked world, your one thought is for your beloved children to come out from among them so that they won't be affected by their many sins. Indeed, bad company does corrupt our morality for both us and our children. If we don't stop following the world who is sinking deeper and deeper into the consequences of their sins, then we shall experience the same wrath being poured out from heaven. O oh Lord, thank you for your warning from heaven. We pray that you give all of your beloved children ears to hear. Come out and be separate. All the teachings and counseling from the world must be rejected as we return to the blessings of your anointed word for all of life and godliness. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Reading from the King James Version of the Bible says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached up into heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Revelation 18, 4 and 5. We have three amazing vocalists today to assist you in the application of the message you have just heard. Our first vocalist is the gifted Lorraine Howard. If we come out from the world as instructed by the voice from heaven, then we will have time to read and study the living Word of God to answer all of our questions and give us power to live our new life in Christ. Now let's listen to Lorraine's new song that will also be played on Tribulation Radio entitled, God's Holy Bible. your Bible, sitting idle on a shelf, and expect it to do you any good for yourself or nobody else, but you can take that Bible, apply its words to your heart, it will make a change in you. And help you make a brand new start Where the Bible is a breathing, living Word of God given Blueprint of your life If you take the time to read it Takes the time to read it And with all your 
your heart just need it It will guide you and it will give you direction Direction And power Give you strength for every hour We'll be right back after a short station break where I will introduce all of my books, not for profit, but for continued support of our ministry. Please consider ordering one directly from my website that will benefit both you and the ministry. I would like to invite you to visit my online bookstore today for one of these incredible books. Final Warning offers evidence that the beast is already building the global city of Revelation. Stand Firm helps lay a foundation for the Christian soldier to overcome the wiles of the devil. Guiding Principles for Biblical Counseling is a very practical book for the layman and the professional. Revelation Truth is a collection of all my timeless articles written to help God's children stand firm. Our next vocalist is our own Paula Dispro, singing so wonderfully about our desire to become more like Jesus once we have listened to his voice from heaven and came out from among them. Instead of missing the world, our every hour is now spent asking God to mold us and make us to be more like him. Now let's listen to this beautiful song entitled, Make Me More Like You. Fashion me 
the clay. Here's my life, take complete control. Jesus, have your way. Lord, mold me, mold me. In your hands, shape and form me. Lord, mold me, mold me. Make me more like you. Mold me, mold me. Fashion me for your glory. Lord, mold me, mold me. Make me more like you. Make me more like you. We have a lot more show, but first I want to personally invite you to listen to an important message from God for all of humanity. This is a message that I never tire of listening to. We all know that Jesus Christ came to save the sinner and give them a new life in Him. But what many of us have forgotten is the true nature of sin. Yes, we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But what is sin? We will all agree to disobey any of His commandments is sin. But how many can you quote? You might say, if I love God and my fellow man, then I have fulfilled His commandments. But don't forget that He has given us over 127 commands in the New Testament alone to show us how to love God and how to love one another. On our own, we cannot obey. But with God, all things are possible. Not only has He promised to save us, but give us the ability to obey all of His commandments and trust Him alone. This is all by the grace of God, not by works lest any man should boast. This grace comes through faith, believing in Jesus Christ who is the true Son of the living God, who died, was buried, and raised on the third day, opens a door to a new life in Him. This is a life where all of our sins are forgiven and we are made into a brand new creation where old things pass away. From the very first day we are given the gift of the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us into all truth, producing every manner of spiritual fruit. This eternal life misses the sting of death and ushers us into His glorious presence. This free gift is given to those who are called into His kingdom. Dear friend, if you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord by placing all of your trust in Him to make you into a new creation and forgive you of all your sins, then you can do that right now in the privacy of your own home. Come to Jesus right now confessing and repenting of your sins, telling Him that you believe that He is the Son of the living God and the only path to salvation asking Him to take full control of your life as Lord. Our last vocalist is the talented Linda Sturdivant. In response to the God of Heaven, who sends forth His writers of the apocalypse, we as His beloved children will now follow Him into battle as children of light. We are the children of light because we have come out from the world and no longer participating in their sins. Now let's listen to Linda Sturdivant sing so beautifully, Night Riders. Sun 
sons of God go forth across the land, pressing into darkness and bringing forth the light, possessing that which was won by our Lord Jesus Christ. Their helmet is salvation, their shield is shield of faith, their breastplate is a righteousness, their loins girded with truth. Teresa Wiggins has a loving heart for the orphans, the widows, and the poor, and invites you to visit her website and make a tax-deductible donation today for one of these precious children. These are only two of the many hungry and deprived children that could use your help. The little girl and boy are from Uganda, Africa. Make your tax-deductible donation today using the PayPal button. Thank you for your help. Thank you for listening to Tribulation Radio. I pray that God has richly blessed your listening experience. Please help us spread the truth by telling your friends and family about Tribulation Radio. May our God bless and protect you until we meet again. Mm -hmm.